Well, this is where the truth comes out. Mm. That's good. That is hot. <clears throat> Temperature wise, it's not hot spicy wise. But I tried for years to really make a good camp stew. I remember at a family reunion about 35 or 40 years ago, one of the old ladies gave me a mason jar full of her camp stew to take home because I enjoyed it so much. And ever since then, I've tried to replicate that type of uh, camp stew. And this is the closest that I've come to it. This is really, really good. So if you like these videos from Country Living with the Waves, please like and subscribe so we can keep them going. Thank you very much. Mm. This is a good recipe. Look below and see the recipe. Hello, and welcome back to Country Living with the Waves. I'm Philip, and today I'll be making Brunswick stew. Put my glasses on here. This is a recipe that I've made a couple of times before. You can see I've really marked it up to make it just right. Uh, this is a Brunswick stew recipe, and it makes about eight quarts, which is two gallons. So you have to have some large containers for this. Now this one starts off, you'll find the recipe by the way, uh, down below, but I'll just briefly tell you it's uh, two pounds of pork, two pounds of chicken. Now my recipe calls for white meat only, but I just really, I do the whole chicken and I, I just put it all in there. Uh, it takes uh, garlic, uh, takes uh, potatoes, carrots, corn, lima beans, diced tomatoes, uh, a whole large bottle of ketchup, uh, a large bottle of a sweet barbecue sauce, um, some uh, hot rotel, um, then pepper and salt, butter. But anyway, you'll see as I make it, the first, the first thing I need to do is to uh, debone the chicken. I already boiled the chicken and I've already boiled the pork loins. I uh, boiled them separately and I let them boil for one hour each and then I just turn the, the heat off and let them sit in there. All right, maybe you'll notice that I've got two separate pots. Even though my recipe calls for cooking the uh, pork loins and the chicken in the same pot, because I was doing a whole chicken, um, I felt like it was going to be too much for one large pot. So this is it. Now on the, the meat, you can see how the meat flakes right now. That's how you want the meat. If you overcook it, it won't flake. It just sort of tears apart. So it doesn't take but just a little bit on the pork loins to go ahead and just tear them all apart there. This may be just a little bit overcooked. It's not shredding as much as I would like for it to. But like I said, I brought it up to a boil and I'll let it boil for one hour. Then I turned it off and just let it cool down in the water itself. Get this shredded here right quick. A little bit finer than this. You don't want chunks that are too big. Too big for somebody to bite into. You want it to sort of shred and just be a good mixture of the vegetables and the meat. Now this is a large recipe. Like I said, it's, it's for two gallons. You can cut this in half. Just use a couple of chicken breasts uh, and uh, one pork. Try and get equal weights of the, of the meats if you can so it sort of balances out. Yeah, this is just sort of crumbling out, but it's still good. It's not really overcooked. It's still shredding out. You can see how it's shredding. That's good. Now on the pork loins, when you go to buy them in the store, you have to watch out because some of them are, are seasoned real strong mesquite or, you know, other types of flavors. And for us, uh, in this type of recipe, it really works better. If you try to get the original that has no seasoning to it, that way you can make your own seasoning. For the Brunswick stew, it doesn't have a taint of a mesquite or something like this in there. See, this is shredding up very quickly, just like this. This is this is perfect right here, how you want it. Just small pieces of meat, stringy meat. So it all just sort of works together in the stew. You don't have to worry about trying to skim off the little skin pieces and stuff. Just let it all go in the stew. It all melds together with the flavors and it does very well. All right, that's one pork loin done. Take it and put it in this bowl here. Now I want to save the broth. Um, you'll notice in the recipe that it says to uh, 
save uh, some of the broth, but the broths are normally mixed together anyway because you cook both at, uh, both at the same time. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of both, so I get some of the pork fat um, in with the chicken fat. Now that's one pork loin, this is the other pork loin. I'll go ahead and uh, do it very quickly as well. I'll speed it up for you. Okay, <clears throat> that's uh, the second pork loin is done. But you can see on that one, I ended up with a pretty big piece of fat here on the end. Uh, so I'm not gonna put that in. <clears throat> now, like I said before, this is really a very large recipe and uh, it's gonna make about two gallons. So there's no way in the world we could eat that much in a weekend, but the goal is to put most of this in the freezer. So now the chicken is deboned and I already have the broth in here. It's a mixture of the two broths. Um, what do I have in here? A quart and a half maybe, maybe close to two quarts. And you see how much meat there is on this? That's all the meat. Now we're ready to start heating it up and adding in the rest of the ingredients. Well now it's time to cut up a couple of onions and uh, chop up some garlic real fine and saute them in a half stick of butter. She's in the skillet. This is a large recipe, so it takes two large onions, and that's a that's a whopper. Well, this will take a little while to saute. So while the onions and the garlic are sauteing, I'll go ahead and I'll peel carrots. That should be enough carrots. Let me cut them up. The onions are still sauteing. So I just stir them around a little bit. You want them sauteed until they're good and Make them a little bit smaller than bite-sized chunks. Now this one's getting pretty fat, so I'm going to split it.
All right, the carrots are done. I'm going to stir this one more time. All right. A little bit there, they're starting to golden up a little bit. It takes a little bit longer to saute the onions. This is a big pile of onions, so you have to stir them around a little bit. But I tell you, the garlic and onion sauteing smells so good. While the recipe calls for six medium potatoes, these are kind of small, so I got a couple extra to set in there. You can peel the potatoes real quick and dice them. So the onion sauteing is finished. Now it's time to dice up the uh, dice up the potatoes here. I guess we all have our ways of dicing. Carrots, they all go in together anyway at the same time. The meat's sitting on the bottom right now and the broth is just coming up the top of the meat. So really that's the right amount. And uh, when I took the excess off, I took a little bit of the fat off too that was floating on the top. But now it's time to add in the caramelized onions. This is going to be good. So it's time to get a little bit more liquid in here. All right. Here's a whole thing of ketchup, a large bottle. Put it in there. To it and get the rest out. Shake it around some. All right, that's the whole bottle of large, large bottle of ketchup. All right, now then, the large thing of barbecue sweet type barbecue sauce. It's not hickory flavored or anything like that. It's just a sweet based of barbecue sauce. We do the same thing, add a little water to it. All right, now adding in a large can of diced tomatoes, we'll add a lot more of the liquid to it. This is a large can of uh, tomatoes, petite diced. This is a, uh, 
how many, 28 ounces. That adds a lot more liquid to it. And the can of Rotel, usually I use the uh, hot, but all I had in the pantry was the original, so that's what I'll put in. Put the whole can in. That should add a lot more juice to it. Let me stir this around a little bit. Oh yeah, you can see it's got a lot more juice just by adding the tomatoes and the little towel in. And the uh, ketchup barbecue sauce. I guess it's time for me to go ahead and turn the heat on on this. And let it start heating up. For right now, I'm just going to put it on medium while I'm stirring things around. Getting everything ready here. Now, with the the lima beans and the corn, you need to drain those real well. You don't want that juice going in here. And it doesn't matter whose name brand it is, just as long as it's whole kernel corn, three cans. And three cans of lima beans. Now there's a difference in lima beans and butter beans. Butter beans are larger, lima beans are small. I'm gonna well drain these well too, dump them inside. Start stirring this. <laughs> I feel like I need a boat paddle now. You can see this is a three gallon pot. Maybe this makes a little bit more than eight quarts. There's been no salt and pepper, no Worcestershire sauce uh, added into it yet. I still have to add those in. Now this size pot, it takes really quite a bit of salt. So, start out with about that much. Uh, a little bit more maybe, about um, one and a half tablespoons to start with. If you start trying to bring things to a boil now, that will take a while. Well, with all the ingredients, I just need to bring it to a boil and then let it turn it down and let it simmer, a simmer type boil for about 45 minutes. All the meat is cooked. It'll probably cook the meat only about 30 minutes in the boiling water, as long as it's good enough to shred because it'll cook some more in here. Mm, can't wait. One thing you really have to watch for as you're cooking this is because it's so thick, it's so easy to scald on the bottom. So you have to continually, every couple of minutes, you have to scrape it across the bottom. I'm using a wooden spoon, it's not really a spoon, with a flat end to make sure that I can scrape the bottom because once you start to burn it on the bottom it completely changes the flavor and you can pick out all the little burnt pieces but it's too late. So make sure you stir and stir and stir. Well this is where the truth comes out. Mm. good that is hot <clears throat> temperature wise it's not hot spicy wise if you like these videos from country living with the waves please like and subscribe so we can keep them going thank you very much mm. this is a good recipe look below and see the recipe